It is that time. The new cards are here. And we're gonna take a look. Power cable with lots of little stringly bits, documentation quick start, and of course, the main event, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090, Founders Edition. The 5090 is quite a bit thinner than the 4090. I was actually really worried about that, that it was gonna be even bigger. Thankfully, it's not. It's quite a bit smaller, so it's gonna fit a lot better into our computers. Now, I'm not allowed to plug this into my computer and make a video about it just yet. That video is gonna come a little bit later this week. I'm gonna be doing a full review, all the creative software, different benchmarks, all that kind of stuff that you wanna see. We did it with the 4090 last time. We're gonna do it again now with the 5090 again this week. Make sure you're subscribed. Now, in this video, I wanted to talk more about these new cards. I just went to CES with NVIDIA. They sponsored my trip out there. I get to see the keynote, the release, and presentation of all these new graphics cards, the new 50 series lineups, and all the mobile versions in the different laptops from various manufacturers. And I've read a lot of additional documentation and white papers so that I'd be able to actually understand why this stuff matters and to be able to kind of talk about the cards. So obviously a huge thank you to NVIDIA for bringing me out and for the card itself. Now my review of the card will not be sponsored, but all this information kind of came from NVIDIA, so therefore, sponsored video. Thank you to them. But now I specifically want to talk about some of the things that I learned that I thought would be really useful for those of us who are anyone who's going to be creatively using these cards, less so for gaming. There's a lot of YouTube channels that are going to cover these cards for gaming performance, for, for the frame generation, for DLSS and all that other kind of stuff. I wanted to talk more about rendering and mega geometry and all these new developments that I don't think the other channels are going to focus on as much because that's kind of more our domain, the creative professionals, 3D artists. So I want to talk about four specific things that when you hear all this stuff and you hear all these words, you know what it means, the technical terminologies that YouTubers are going to be referring to. That way, when you're making your decisions, you're thinking about it, you're watching all these videos, there's a little bit more context as to what that means specifically for our creative workflows in our softwares. And ultimately, if you're gonna pay for our new card, what you're really buying and what you're investing in. So the first is an easy one, RT cores, that'll be pretty quick, followed by mega geometry, very exciting some of the AI stuff. And when you hear AI, I want you to know exactly what that means in terms of these graphics cards. I know AI is a big conversation. You hear that and immediately we have certain assumptions. I wanna just quickly talk about like what that actually means for these cards. And then finally, just a few miscellaneous extras at the end that I thought were interesting. Some of them were cool, some of them were weird, and I thought you'd get a kick out of hearing about them. First thing fairly quick, you're gonna hear about fourth generation RT cores. We've had different sort of generations of ray tracing based graphics cards. And so if you go back, that was Pascal, Turing, Ada, and now Blackwell. <laughs> And basically what this refers to is like the chip, the main kind of brain of the graphics cards. What that's gonna mean for us, each new generation of RT cores is basically upping the speed of ray tracing performance in general. Obviously that's usually focused towards gaming and that's often talked about as kind of the main thing of graphics cards of how it's gonna help with your games. But if you're rendering in Unreal, Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, pretty much everything, like we have a lot of ray tracing based renderers that we're using. The ray tracing performance in general for rendering is what is being worked on in these cards when it comes to RT cores. And the technical part of that is that if you compare the last generation of Ada cards with this new generation of Blackwell cards, it's two times the throughput, meaning it's supposed to basically pass twice as much information as the past generation of cards, which is where I think we get that potential 2x in performance. I don't know if it's going to be like that for all cases. I'm not expecting it to be just always double as fast. That's a lot. We'll find out how much that's going to actually apply in our day-to-day -day renders, but that's sort of the idea of what an RT core means for these and how we can expect to see the benefits in regular workflows. But moving on to mega geometry. Mega geometry is something kind of specific. I think it's specific to Unreal Engine. It's something that it sounds like NVIDIA and Epic have partnered for. And in the same way that Epic Games developed Nanite, which was a way to have insane amounts of detail, poly count, triangles on screen at once, where it's sort of working with levels of detail to up-res, not up-res, it allows you to have the full resolution of whatever geometry you've built. This statue was imported directly from ZBrush and is more than 33 million triangles. Whenever you're close to it, you see all that detail. And when things get farther away, it sort of optimizes and turns off some of that detail because you won't be able to see it anyways. And so like that was Nanite. When ray tracing those types of scenes, all the light rays would get computed, not based on this fine detail of like mesh geometry information. It would get computed based on like proxy geometry or lower levels of detail, uh, less high res versions of the geometry, but kind of have to jump around how it's computing. And so when something jumps from one level of detail to the next, it you know changes resolution. 
it pops, the lighting would then pop. Everything would kind of update with those levels of detail. Anyway, Mega Geometry is the name they've given the technology for this new way of computing mesh data, where it sort of combines all these levels of detail together into like a volume-based mesh. What you need to know is it's kind of a cluster-based technique, where it basically will now ray trace the actual full res mesh, and it basically can process all that data and ray trace that information, rather than having to work off a proxy and lower res geometry. This is something that both the Ada cards and the Blackwell cards can do, so I believe the 40 series also does this, double check my work on that. But it's going to be faster on the new cards with the additional acceleration, other like engine stuff going on inside. But the one thing that is kind of more specific to these cards is fine geometry, like small stuff like hair. You can now ray trace hair on these GPUs. This will also show up in like bushes and foliage where normally that kind of stuff would get like kind of disconnected and fuzzy. Now it should actually stay solid and stable, small fine meshes basically. And all that mega geometry stuff is cool for rendering and lighting and that kind of thing. But for animation, there's a specific thing that helps us. All those techniques and the cluster-based workflows that they're doing, that technique has been applied to subdivision surfaces and deformed displacement meshes. Basically meaning, whenever we animate, we animate quad-based meshes. We don't really animate triangulated stuff. The triangulation happens like at runtime or at render time. It's, it's, it's after our work is done. But that's one of the big reasons why we often will animate stuff for film or TV, and then we have to hand it down the pipeline, and then it gets to get simulated later. Even for animation, it's not often that we get to have the full detailed mesh with all the displacement and all the bumps and all the you know mesh detail that might exist in the final model. We don't usually get to see that lit and rendered in real time. In some cases we can, but it's not very common. That was one of the big pushes with Mega Geometry is that not only can you ray trace really complex stuff, but you can ray trace really complex quad geometry stuff, even if it's deformed and animated all at once. There were some demos with this dragon character where you could go up and you can see the displacement stuff. It's all fully animated. That's a lot of geometry, live animation, all running at real time with the lighting and the ray tracing happening all at once. This is a really big step in taking film quality assets and rendering them in real time. If none of that made any sense to you, just know that you can have scenes like this that are really, really pretty and really high detailed and you can light and render it all really, really quickly on these cards. Which leads us to the next category. I wanna talk specifically about when they say AI, there's something called RTX neural shaders. Neural shaders are divided into like three different, I don't know, categories of, of what the Blackwell cards can do and compute and all that kind of stuff. Think of it like this. The cards have AI in the sense that they will store and pull information in the way that like AI computing works. And they do that when they call neural networks, kind of more how brains map out information versus how computers have traditionally mapped out information. It's sort of a data compression and retrieval technique, I guess you could say. And what it allows you to do is take textures and train it into the cards so that they understand what you've given it and can compute various lighting and direction and different conditions. And it allows it to store that information seven times more efficiently, retrieve it five times as quickly, and never have it be altered. So you get the kind of original information that much faster and better in the sense that you can do a lot more of it. So you can have a lot of really high res textures all stored and all pulled very accurately. And that comes along with other things like neural radiance fields, where it's basically calculating the light bounces and sort of taking what it figures out and calculates really quickly and inferring that with other information it has and all the kind of training data about how light bounces. It's a whole thing. Again, I don't want to go into like the technical weeds too much, but the, the bottom line of, of this part, of what I'm trying to say, is that when you hear AI and shaders, it's probably not the thing you're thinking of because it's sort of a new like technique of computing, I guess, right? It's how the information is stored in GPU memory and sort of bounced around however the card talks to itself. Even I don't fully understand. I'm not an engineer. I'm not smart enough to really know how all this works, but when I read all the information, that's what I got from it, and I felt that that was interesting enough that you might want to hear about it. Because I feel like none of us really know what anyone means when they talk about, these cards are faster because the Blackwell chips can do AI and da 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 da. Like, that's, it's all very, like, high level. But I thought it was interesting that it really came down to, like, how the data is, like, stored and accessed and used with the ray tracing lighting advantages, basically, to just figure out how those textures are supposed to look on screen very, very fast. Hopefully that's somewhat helpful. 
And I have one more note on this, NVIDIA NIMS and Blueprints. The example they showed was this way to use Blender to generate images using Gen AI, but to sort of tell it where you wanted certain objects to be. And you would tell it, hey, like I want a boat in the middle of this like canal. And it would kind of look at the shapes and go, that must be the boat. Cool, we'll put a boat there. I actually got some hands-on time with this. I wanted to see if I could break it and mess with it. And so I capsized the boat and I put a little cone and I said, like, light the boat on fire. And it did it. And that was just kind of a fun thing. So they basically took these different AI tools, they combined them in what's called a blueprint, and then they implemented that blueprint in Blender since it's open source and you can play with it, like you could, developers can build tools. And so I think the intention is that NVIDIA is building these tools and releasing them to developers and then developers would then combine them in different ways and build blueprints and implement them for artists. Like it's, it's the developers who need to make the tools that we actually wanna use. All of these demos at CES were sort of the tech demos of, hey, like this is what we developed, here's how we've seen it, like how it could be used. Now please go and like make cool stuff and figure out how we should use it and how it should be developed and who actually wants to do certain things with it. So these different demonstrations that we got to see were sort of the bursts of inspiration to say, here's what we figured out, now go, play. And then finally, some of the miscellaneous things that I saw that were just interesting. Some of the things were useful, like the amount of video encoding you can do on the new cards or just speeding up video exporting in general through Resolve and other applications. There were some nice quality of life things for NVIDIA broadcasts, like the studio mic, where you can basically just have a, a bad microphone, but it'll make it sound like a really good microphone. And then there was uh, virtual key lights, which sort of generates like a normal map based on like the video input. And then you can relight your face using fake lighting. They're helpful when they're like built into these camera and microphone tools for meetings and things like that. But I'm interested to see what they'll become once this kind of stuff ends up in like After Effects, for example. Like what will you be able to do when you can like take that tech and use it in After Effects to relight clips or fix the color correction on something you may have recorded. I don't know. I do a lot of video work. So that's very interesting to me. But the thing I wanna end on was R2X. It's like these virtual assistants. It's this like person on your desktop that you can ask questions and you know, like get help with stuff. But what was interesting is you can like drop PDFs on and then that's the stuff they know. So they're not like connected to the internet or externally, like you're not talking to some server or you know putting your data anywhere it just runs on your computer on your gpu so it's basically like a really advanced interface for like finding stuff or looking through stuff or searching for things like it's just a different way of interacting with the things already on your computer i like when these ai services are just on the computer and they're not connected externally to things because then there's nothing really to like be concerned about like i had done a video in the past where I did a Q and A and I ran every question through this like chat window where the AI behind it was literally only knowledgeable in my YouTube videos. Like I gave it my YouTube playlist, it pulled the transcripts for all of my videos and that's the only thing that this like chatbot knew. Just ran on my computer and I answered every question from what like the AI chatbot thing answered with, but the answers were based on my videos. So it was like me answering through it. It was interesting, it was kind of fun to try. This is like the next evolution of that interface. Instead of having the chat window, you can now talk to it. I think it's nice to be part of the conversation and to kind of just know where things are headed so you're not surprised when we get there. <laughs> I like knowing what's being developed and how it works as best I can. And hopefully this video was helpful in sort of sharing some of that with you. And that is my recap of the tech behind the cards. And let me know in the comments, as soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna start benchmarking and I'm gonna plug this in and test this out. Maya, Blender, Unreal Engine for sure. I'm gonna see what this thing can do. If you have any specific requests, things you wanna find out, let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know what you're curious about and I will do my best. And as always, I'm Sir Wade. Thank you for watching. Thank you to NVIDIA for the card and for all the information, the resources for bringing me to CES to learn all this stuff. And I will see you in the next video where we see what this thing can do.